the best shooting guards have a pure stroke and unlimited range. The NBA has seen some of the best players ever play at the two spot. We're counting down the top 10 shooting guards of all time, but who will be number one? Stay to the end for the complete list of the best shooting guards to ever do it. Number 10, Tracy McGrady. More famously known as T-Mac, Tracy McGrady was a beast in his prime, but he had his fair share of injuries. He had back problems early in his career, but persevered and constantly delivered excellent performances to NBA fans. Nobody will ever forget his 13 point in 35 seconds to beat the Spurs in a close regular season game, right? There was not a single move that T-Mac couldn't do. The turnaround, dunk package, the three ball, the mid-range game, you name it, he was complete. Remember the infamous quote that Kobe said? He could do everything I could, but he was 6'10". He had no weaknesses in his game. He could score from anywhere and defend. He's the hardest player I have ever had to guard. Summing up T-Mac's career, McGrady is a seven-time NBA All-Star, a seven-time All-NBA pick, a two-time NBA scoring champion, the 2001 NBA Most Improved Player Award recipient, and lastly, in 2017, he was inducted into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. Number 9. Ray Allen Ray Allen, also known as Jesus Shuttlesworth, ranks second all-time in three-pointers made with 2,973, and before Stephen Curry broke his record, he was regarded as the greatest shooter ever after surpassing Reggie Miller's career record of 2,563s made. Allen was also a Hall of Fame player with accolades such as 10 All-Star teams and two All-NBA teams while winning two NBA championships. The two NBA championships he won were with the Boston Celtics and the Miami Heat. His first came with the Celtics in 2008 when he was the third best player on a squad that included Paul Pierce, Rajon Rondo, and Kevin Garnett. He won his second championship with the Miami Heat, who were led by LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh. His shot in Game 6 of the 2013 Finals is widely regarded as the most important shot in the 2013 Finals, and one of the best in Finals game history. Once again, Ray Allen, he got game. Number 8, Reggie Miller. Reggie Miller, the Knicks killer, is also known as one of the league's most clutch players, with 2,563 pointers made. One of those shots was the game winner against Jordan and the Bulls in 1998. He is ranked fourth all-time following James Harden, Ray Allen, and Stephen Curry. Reggie also led the league in free throw percentage several times, concluding with a career average of 88.8%. He was named to the All-Star team five times and three times to the All-NBA third team. Miller was the personification of consistency at his best, averaging between 18.1 and 24.6 points per game over the course of 11 seasons between 1989 to 2000. His total points of 22,623 rank him 22nd all-time in NBA history. In addition, he is the third player in NBA history to record a season percentage of 50, 40, 90. He may have never won a championship, but playing well, delivering multiple clutch shots, and being an efficient scorer during a time when some of the greatest players and certainly some of the biggest dynasties were in the NBA is amazing. Number 7. James Harden He is a perennial all-star, all-NBA, one of the best players in the league, a scoring machine, and an MVP. He's the man who proved that even when you're not the most qualified candidate for a job, sometimes all it takes is a great cover letter. Kidding aside, in all honesty, not many people know that before the 2009 draft, Harden was not supposed to be the third pick. However, Harden sent Thunder GM Sam Presti an email explaining why he belonged in Oklahoma City. And then the rest is history. 13 years later, he's now called the Beard. He played for the Rockets, where he had his best years. Harden is currently second all-time among Rocket scorers with 18,365. He was incredible in Houston. He has averaged 29.6 points, 7.7 .7 assists, and 6.0 rebounds in 621 games for the Rockets. Man, he broke so many ankles, scored so many points, and racked up a lot of triple doubles, but he just couldn't win a chip there. But there's still a lot of time left for him. After his Houston stay, he went to the Nets to play alongside Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. His time there was brief, as he only played 80 games for the Nets before being traded to the Sixers. Currently, Harden is 7-time All-NBA, 10-time All-Star, 1-time 6-Man of the Year awardee, 1-time Gold Medalist, and 1-time NBA MVP. Indeed, a surefire candidate for the Hall of Fame. Number 6. Clay Thompson Clay Thompson is one of the most lethal scorers in the NBA. He's the best sniper on this list. 
His range is undeniably limitless, and when he ignites, no one will be able to stop him. Clay Thompson has provided NBA fans with multiple unbelievable performances. There's the Game 6 Clay performance, when he scored 41 points while making 11 out of his 18 three-pointers in Game 6 of 2016 Western Conference Finals, the unbreakable scoring record of 37 points in just one quarter, and there's the record of 14 made threes performance. However, the most amazing one in his book is when he exploded for 60 points on 11 dribbles and in only 29 minutes of action against the Indiana Pacers from six years ago. That incredible sharpshooting performance earned Klay Thompson the 2016-17 NBA Performance of the Year Award. For 10 seasons with the Warriors, Klay has averaged 19.5 points, 3.5 rebounds, and 2.3 assists. Despite missing out for two years, his career is already more than Hall of Fame worthy as he is an all-defensive team member, a two-time All-NBA team member, a five-time All-Star, and a four-time NBA champion. Number five, Allen Iverson. He was the MVP in 2001, scoring 31.1 points per game, and he led the Sixers to the NBA Finals, handing the Lakers their sole loss of the series. AI scored 48 points in game one, including a legendary crossover on Ty Lu to put the game away and created one of the most iconic images in basketball. Remember that he played with a not-so-effective version of Matumbo, as well as Eric Snow, Aaron McKee, and Thea Ratliff. It was incredible that he was able to steer that squad to the finals. He was a scoring machine, a killer, and he had no fear. He could literally score from anywhere during his prime. He averaged 23.5 points per game in his first season, and AI broke Wilt's rookie record of three straight 40-point games. From 2001 to 2006, he averaged more than 30 points per game. He was injured, but he managed to stay consistent and keep delivering. When it comes to his impact on the game of basketball, this is possibly the most crucial reason most consider him a true NBA great. His capacity to influence others is unparalleled. He was an icon. Nobody had the swag he had. By flaunting jewelry, jerseys, and snapbacks to games, he helped normalize being unapologetically yourself in the NBA. Because of him, many players have followed this trend, which exists to this day. Many players, notably Chris Paul and LeBron James, have publicly supported him. Chris Paul even states that AI is the reason he plays basketball and wears number three. That is unquestionably an indication of greatness. Regardless of the fact that he never won an NBA title, it's difficult to argue that the answer isn't a true NBA great and a top five shooting guard in NBA history. Number four, Dwayne Wade. During his 16-year NBA career, he played for the Chicago Bulls and Cleveland Cavaliers, but obviously Wade is Miami. Wade spent 15 seasons with the Heat. He was a 13-time NBA All-Star, 8-time All-NBA, 3-time All-Defensive Teams, and 1-time Scoring Champion. Of course, can't forget those three NBA championships and the MVP award from the 2006 NBA Finals. If you want to understand just how good Wade was, just look at his 2005-2006 season. Dwayne Wade averaged 27.2 points, 6.7 assists, and 5.7 rebounds in 75 games in the regular season. And in the finals, he averaged 34.7 points, 7.8 rebounds, and 3.8 assists to beat the Dallas Mavericks. Until today, it's still widely considered one of the greatest finals performances in the history of the NBA. Does Wade deserve to be in the top four? Come on, D. Wade scored 23,165 points in 1,054 regular season games, has a regular season scoring average of 21.98 points per game, and scored an additional 3,954 points in the 177 postseason games. As Wade once said in an interview, I don't care. I put my resume out there and I let my resume speak for itself. I can't add any more to my basketball resume. You can't mention basketball without mentioning me. You can't talk about being a champion without mentioning me. I did my part and I let my resume speak for itself. Number three, Jerry West. He is the NBA logo. He has to be a top five guy. He was a 12-time All-Star, NBA champ, and the one and only NBA player who lost the finals but was awarded as finals MVP. Yes, he didn't win the finals in 1969, but he won finals MVP. Gotta be a top five kind of guy thing. And this guy also averaged 25 points, five rebounds, and six assists a game, and sank an uncountable number of clutch shots. Mr. Clutch was a great shooter at any range, and he was a top defender before NBA defense was even significant. Wes was reliable and occasionally played hurt. 
there's just no such thing as load management or rest for him. Aside from that, West was a tremendous all-around team player in terms of ball control, shooting, rebounding, handing out dimes, intercepting balls, and being the team's floor captain. West was a great player in his day who would have fit in and flourished in any generation, particularly in today's league. His reputation goes on with the figure of a player on the NBA logo, which is no surprise given that he dedicated most of his life to basketball. Number 2. Kobe Bryant There's a lot we could say about the late great Kobe Bryant. He's a Hall of Famer with 5 rings, 2 Finals MVPs, 18 All-Star appearances, 2 gold medals, and 1 regular season MVP. In addition, he's 4th all-time in scoring, 12th all-time in points per game for the playoffs, and 8th all-time in win shares for the playoffs. Kobe is among the few players to score 45 points or more in, in 4 consecutive games. The Black Mamba once outscored the entire opposing squad in 3 quarters. Call him a ball hog, but his thing was effective. He proved that effectiveness until his last career game when he dropped 60 against Utah. Kobe was the youngest player to score 32,000 points and was the youngest to reach every other scoring milestone before LeBron reached this milestone in 2019. Lastly, Kobe holds numerous franchise records, including the most 40, 50, and 60 point games. No matter how many words are said, it will never be enough to explain how great the Black Mamba was on the court and off the court. R.I.P. Kobe. Number 1. Michael Jordan You probably saw it coming. It comes as no surprise. It's undeniably indisputable that MJ is still number 1. He's number 1 because he was a ruthless competitor. MJ would practice harder than any NBA player in history. He's number one because he was a phenomenal athlete. His bag is way deep. His fadeaways, mid-range game, face-ups, jab steps, pull-ups, dunks, and layup packages were all second to none. And then he's number one because there is that one thing that separates him the most from others, his clutchness. MJ was consistently effective in hitting game-winning shots in the most crucial circumstances possible. For many years, this number one guy served as the face of the NBA. His stardom outside of the basketball world is unmatched. He's still the best shooting guard ever and may be for a lot longer.